Once again, welcome back to Mercer County Close Up. I'm Tony Cordes Jr. Thanks for joining us. We're excited to have Rich Lee. He's a local author in our studio to talk a little bit about his book, War and Media Essays on News Reporting, Propaganda and Popular Culture. Rich Lee joins us. He, of course, wrote one chapter in that book. And Rich, I want you to talk about that chapter a little bit because I find it very interesting because of the period of the time, what was going on. I think some of the readers, or our viewers out there will find it very interesting indeed. Well, one of the interesting things that which actually led me to write this chapter was there's a notion out there, it's a popular notion that the press kind of eroded support for the war in right. America. And when people have actually gone back and studied the press reports, done detailed content analyses, that wasn't the case. You know, that they look at, you know, pretty much the news reports echoed the party line, whether it was coming out of the administration in Washington, from generals in, in Vietnam. And if that was the case, I started to wonder then how did people find the other side of the story? Right. And the truth is there were a number of factors, but, but one of them I felt was protest music. I felt a lot of things were coming out in the songs and the lyrics that was not being reported in the mainstream media. And I went back and I did the research and I found that that really was the case. Now you're a former music critic. I thought I thought that was very interesting. Great, uh, I guess, great uh, mixture of talents there, and being an author and a former music critic. Yeah, er early in my career, I worked for a newspaper called the Aquarian Weekly in Montclair. Okay. I was their New Jersey music editor. And I've always been interested in music, so for, in a lot of ways, it was an ideal job. It's one of those things I'm glad I did. But I've, my career has taken a lot of turns <laughs> and twists. I've gone into you know covering politics, working for government. Right. Uh, but this was a way for me to to go back to something that I've always been interested in. And to kind of combine it with some of my current interests. Now, in your research gathering, of course, you talked to songwriters and, and musicians, I would guess, and, right. and copulated all that information to come up with your summation. I, I did. Um, it was kind of, um, I, I enjoyed tracking down some of these old folk singers from the 60s. And you know, one of the things today is, you know, we have email, they have websites, which they didn't have back then. Right. So they were easy to find, or at least find someone in their organization. But I, I was very happy with the response that I got. Obviously, not everyone you know, got back to me, was able to take part. But the ones who did talk with me were very enthusiastic about the project. Um, Buffy St. Marie, in particular, was, was very enthusiastic. You know, said she was happy somebody was writing something along these lines, gave me her cell number, her home number. She said, <laughs> anything you need. What you need. Get, yeah. That's great. So, and that, you know, was the response that, that I got from most people. That was, so I was happy about that. And once again, the chapter that you authored is entitled Protest Music as Alternative Media During the Vietnam War Era. Now, you have to remember back, and for those of you a little bit younger than I, you have to remember back, way back, and check uh, check Google, check check the Vietnam era out, because Lyndon Baines Johnson, of course, president during those times, was very strong as far as uh, having a stranglehold, you could say, on the uh, freedom of information that was being uh, released to the media in regards to how the war was going. Of course, Richard Nixon came on a little bit later on, and, and he had the same stranglehold on the media. So information regarding what was going on in Vietnam as far as U.S. troops was uh, foreign. It, it was it was just it was non-existent almost. You had to have a reporter on the ground, uh, you know, and and sometimes that was even curtailed and censored as far as what the American public could see. So there lies the songwriter, the musician, right. to give that message out through uh, through song. Yeah, and what was interesting is it was an era when we didn't have the internet. They didn't play the large arenas. Most of these people didn't have big record companies right. behind them, and the message was just so strong that that it spread throughout the country. And it was a time when you know, and co coffee houses on college campuses, you know, things would happen. Um, sometimes controversy helped spread the word. You may remember um, Pete Seeger was unable to originally sing the Big Muddy on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, and there was so much controversy over that when he finally did get to sing it, I think the audience was much greater than it would have been originally. You know, it's amazing. We think back now on these quote unquote controversies that yeah. existed then and we say wow it was really a big uh, big deal about that and it shouldn't have been but yeah you see the things that are happening today yeah. and, and it's amazing to think that people made a big issue out of it. times are changing yeah. indeed and uh, it was amazing then that the government had that kind of control over the media almost unheard of now yeah and a lot of it wasn't official I mean there might not have been official censorship but there was a lot of intimidation or reporters yeah. felt that if they did write something that cast the government and the war in a bad light you know they their sources might suddenly dry up once again, the book is War and Media Essays on News Reporting, Propaganda, and Popular Culture. Rich Lee, of course, wrote one uh, chapter in that book, Protest Music as Alternative Media During the Vietnam War Era. And, of course, I want to talk about Rich as the Communication Director of the Hall Institute of Public Policy uh, of New Jersey. It's located in Trenton. and it, That's sort of a think tank. Yes, we're a think tank. We're about four years old. We look at 
uh, issues across the board that have some bearing on New Jersey. We're in the process of, you know, as you might imagine, doing a lot of work on the governor's race. At, at oh this yes. Point. Um, so things are it, heating up. Yeah, it's always there's always plenty to write about, to research, to study here in New Jersey. So um, this was a, you know, a project which kind of went hand in hand with my work at the Hall Institute. So How did you get started writing? Um, journalist. I uh, was a uh, worked for a weekly newspaper in Montclair. Okay. Then did the music thing. Um, and eventually worked for a small daily, which is how I started you know, covering politics. Um, this particular project, I, after spending maybe about 20, 25 years in the business, I decided to go back to school and earn a PhD about six, seven years ago. So okay. you know, this particular project evolved out of a course I took there on media coverage of war. And of course, you're a resident of Hamilton Township. Yes, been here a little bit over 20 years. Uh, happy to live here. Oh, yeah. Great community. Local talents everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we're happy to have Rich Lee in our studio. Rich, good luck with the book. Keep us up to date on uh, some more publications you may have coming out, and don't be a stranger. Okay, Tony, appreciate it. All Thanks right. For having Rich me. Lee, of course, uh, one of the authors of the book that's uh, out now, available on Amazon.com, entitled War and the Media Essays on News Reporting, Propaganda, and Popular Culture. Again, you want to check out Protest Music as Alternative Media during the Vietnam War Era. That was, of course, authored by Rich Lee, a native right here, a resident of Hamilton Township. Happy to have him on board on this edition of Mercer County Close-Up. That'll wrap things up for us in studio for this evening. Thanks for joining us as always. Don't forget you can log on to WZBN.com and also join us uh, via email at WZBNTV at gmail.com and send us your thoughts and comments regarding this segment, future guests you would like to see, or hot topics that you would like to see discussed. Until next time, I'm Tony Cornish Jr. once again. As always, have a safe night.